Agents are supposed to get their clients money, no matter what sport or kind of industry it is that they're agents for. In fact, as far as baseball goes, what they do is try and have teams overpay for their clients, even if they're not really worth that much money. Part of that is because they form bonds and friendships with their clients, and part of it is the fact that they're practically greedy lawyers who just want to get as much money as possible. In the case of Jeremy Jeffress, it seemed like the former was the case, at least at first. But now, his career may be ruined because of his former agent. Take a second to like this video, and if you're new to the channel and end up enjoying this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button for future baseball content. Jeremy Jeffress first broke onto the major league scene with the Milwaukee Brewers in 2014 and 2015, where he made a name for himself. In 2014 with the Brewers, Jeffress threw 28 and two-thirds innings while pitching his way to a 1.88 ERA, striking out 25 hitters. And then in 2015, Jeffress pitched the entire year with the Brewers, throwing almost 70 innings and pitching his way to a 2.65 ERA, punching out 67 hitters. After another great 44 and two-thirds innings of good pitching for Jeffress, the Brewers would trade him to the Rangers, where he'd go on to have a 2.7 ERA in just over 13 innings, but struggled mightily in 2017, which all then led to the Rangers just trading him back to the Brew Crew, where he'd pitch a lot better to finish the season. And then 2018 arrived, and Jeffress became an elite reliever, throwing 76 and two-thirds innings, the most in his career, and pitching to an ERA of 1.2. He was just flat out nasty. He didn't come close to repeating that elite year the next in 2019, pitching to an ERA over 5, and would later end up signing with the Chicago Cubs on a one-year deal for the 2020 season where he was really good yet again. During the shortened 2020 season, Jeffress got 8 saves, pitched to a 1.54 ERA, all while holding opposing hitters to a 137 batting average. He was one of the Cubs' three nominees for the 2020 All-MLB team and was a finalist for the National League Reliever of the Year award. As good as he was that season, and in several seasons throughout his career as a whole, it took until after teams were reporting to spring training for him to find a job, and it ended up being on a minor league deal. So that itself seems fishy. And then what's more fishy is the fact that he was released less than two weeks later. The day he was released, Jeffers tweeted this out, saying, quote, Joshua Kuznick just ruined my life. I've been nothing but a great friend and client to him for over 10 years. Thanks, buddy. End quote. Ten days later, he had more to say, tweeting out angry cursing emojis and then saying this, quote, I'm not signed yet because every team thinks I'm a problem. When it's the opposite, I come to play baseball. I come to become a family member of each and every player in that locker room. Ask every team I've been on. I'm close with every player. The fact that my ex-agent has ruined my chances on playing this season is killing me. I wanted to sign with anyone, but going home would be a blessing. Want to know the real me? Talk to me, not bums. End quote. He since tweeted things randomly like, I'm still here, and has posted clips of him throwing in batting cages, still getting ready. Joshua Kuznick, the agent he blames ruined his career, is not necessarily the most class act out there. I've talked to him myself a few times personally, and publicly on Twitter, and he's the last thing you'd think an actual Major League Baseball agent would be like. He's full of himself, immature, a wannabe comedian, which is totally fine, but you kinda have to be funny for that. There have been instances where Kuznick has tweeted at or messaged me like 5-10 to 10 times in a row at least because of how angry and professional he gets. The reason I'm telling you all this is because of the fact that it does not surprise me one bit that Jeffress fell out of his friendship with his agent, because Kuznick is not the most professional person and the easiest guy to get along with. But it then begs the question, what exactly happened to result in Jeffress failing to find a job to this day? That I do not know. Jeffers has also tweeted out a couple of times his disbelief in some other players who have been signed by teams over him, with one of those tweets regarding Wade LeBlanc, who is a 37-year-old left-handed starting pitcher, someone who was recently signed by the St. Louis Cardinals. And in Jeffers' latest tweet regarding players getting signed before him, 44-year-old, yes, a 44-year-old, has been signed by the San Diego Padres. Jeffers is 33 years old and put up incredible numbers in 2020. What in God's name is going on? I felt the need to chime in on his tweet. So I did, asking what he did to deserve this, and this is what he responded with, quote, Nothing. I have done nothing to deserve this. I wake up every morning hurt because I don't know what I have done, end quote. When I asked if his former agent Joshua Kuznick had something to do with it, he simply replied, yes. And then when I told him he blocked me on Twitter, Jeffers responded by saying, quote unquote, he ran away from everyone. This is certainly one of the more interesting unsolved things in the game right now. It just doesn't make any sense. But what does make sense is that Jeffress does not like his former agent Joshua Kuznick anymore. From personal experience, it's not hard to see why someone would dislike Kuznick. Let me know what you think about this situation and thank you for watching.